that. Amen. Amen. So good to be back. Are you guys doing well? Yeah, it's been, uh, I just got back um, last week, Sunday. Hey, no, was it last week, Sunday? No, Wednesday. I got back on Wednesday. No, no, no. I got back on Tuesday and then we got, a fl- we got on a flight on Wednesday. We went to Miri for three-day stadium events. Uh, we saw about 4,000 people came in the stadium and it was a powerful time in Miri. And then uh, we got back on Sunday, right, guys? Huh? We got back on Sunday and God has been so good. Amen. How you guys? Uh, how you guys? Good. I, I feel I feel like I'm supposed to say hi to everybody, but uh, <laughs> time won't be enough. But uh, I'm so excited to be back. Uh, definitely, it was an amazing trip. The last three months, um, I would say, the last three months have been time with the Lord. It's just it's one of those moments I feel like God just took me aside and just wanted to spend time, you know, with Him. All right, I've I've come with a fresh heart for ministry at the same time fresh heart to know Jesus more than any time any time ever you know I, I have burning desire to know the Lord more than ever and um, I do have some some things the Lord spoke to me um, but I want you to know that that God actually around the world as I travel I want you to know God is moving powerfully God is doing powerful things in America what you hear in CNN what you hear from Fox News is all rubbish I was like, wow, yes, it is. It is not true. What God is doing in America and Europe, it's beyond what we can believe. People are getting saved left, right, center. Churches are being filled. I tell you, during church, during COVID, that's this one church grew from like probably 50 to almost 3,000 people during COVID. Can you believe that? And so God is moving. Turn to your neighbor and say, God is on the move. Amen. So the power of God is, you know, being manifest as a revival happening down in LA. Um, I, I know of a ministry that, that young people are coming to the Lord in a massive way. Hundreds of them coming to the Lord almost on a weekly basis. And so the power of God, God is moving powerfully. And, and I believe and I believe it's time for Malaysia. Amen. It's time for our city, JB, to see revival. Amen. It is time for us to see the great move of God. We want to see people get saved, healed and delivered and receive Jesus like never before. Amen. One of the things that's burning in my heart that God began to begin to do, begin to speak to me as I spent time with the Lord three months preaching at different places. The Lord says, Johnny, will you take up the mental, the torch of seeing people get saved? I remember walking into Reinhard Bonke. How many of you know Reinhard Bonke? You know, he's one of the greatest evangelists that ever lived. You know, uh, the Lord used him to save 88 million people in Africa. So I remember walking into his office in Orlando, looking at his picture, and I just I sat at the couch, sat at the couch. I'm going to see him, guys. Just uh, Daddy, get up on the stage. It's going to be, it's going to be amazing this tonight, all right? God's going to just move in this place. So I, I, ro- I sat in that couch. You know, they have a fancy place, and I sat there, and I was like, God... If you can use this man to see Africa get saved, 88 million. Can you just imagine how many people that over the years? And I, as I sat there and his successor, Daniel Kalenda, I just say hi to him. We just chatted a little bit. And I began to sit there and, and I felt the Lord was saying to me, Johnny, I'm willing to do this in Asia. I'm willing to do this in Malaysia. I'm willing to do this on earth. One, one more time, God wants to save soul again. And God is looking for a man. God is looking for a people group. God is looking for a church who will say, at all costs, we want to see people get saved. Amen. Yeah. And I believe Calvary City Church, our oh, Calvary City Church, Calvary Community Church, yeah. we are chosen by the Lord for a great harvest. Yeah. Amen. We are chosen by the Lord. Turn to your neighbor and say, you are chosen by the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Come on, turn to the other neighbor and say, you are chosen by the Lord for a time and season such as this. So I believe, we're going to see that happen. I do want to minister on the word. I'm going to, I'm going to minister to the word. But I really felt for both of you, I see the season is shifting for you. There's been a delay. There's been a hold back. But I see next three months, the Lord actually going to do turn around for you. 2024 will never be the same like 2023. Forget about the past and move towards what God has. Such an anointing of the Lord going to come. Why don't you still lift your hand to the Lord? Let me pray for you. Father, just thank you for your anointing. Thank you, God. I just pray for your grace. Why did you stretch your hands towards this brother and sister? Come on. 
Thank you, Lord. What the, your grandfather saw, what your father saw. I don't know who it was in the ministry, but I feel like that is falling on you. You both are called to serve the Lord. Don't give up. There's been a shifting over you. The enemy is trying to, you know, discourage you, but the Lord is saying, no, serve. As you will serve me, I will, oh, my Lord, I feel it. As you will serve me, you will, I, will, I will visit you, your children, and your children's children, says the Lord. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Father, let your anointing rest on this family. Bless them, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. And um, it was, it was and, and I, just, I just feel the Lord is saying, we are a chosen people for a time and season such as this. And when I saw, I'll just talk a little bit and then I will minister the word. Is that okay? Okay, I will get into the word, but I just feel like talking a little bit, you know. Um, and I just, when I, was, when I was in Miri, you know, like just standing at the stadium, is, I felt the Lord said, this is, this is going to be normal in Malaysia. How many of you know God have built all the stadiums around Malaysia for people to get safe? Five people are believing I'm, I'm with you. How many of you know God have filled up all the stadiums in Malaysia around the world for people to get safe? Are we going to see that kind of anointing fall on us? Amen. Uh, we're going to see that kind of anointing come on, on, on us. But um, tonight, without, you know, without taking too much time, I want to minister to you from the, from, the, from the very, if I don't want to say title, but I want to minister from this revelation of the Lord, which is called the victory of Jesus. All right, I want to minister to you. But before that, before that, we're going to minister unto the Lord first. Okay, we're going to worship the Lord in one more chorus. But I want you to do something. Whatever is going through your mind, Whatever you're feeling, lay it all aside. But I believe the Lord's going to touch you fresh. It's going to be a fresh anointing this tonight that God's going to just going to just going to like come on you. Amen. What is the anointing does? All right. The anointing of the Lord. Listen carefully from the front to the back. The anointing of the Lord. When the Lord anointed Saul as a king, the Bible says when the, when the Lord anointed him, how many of you know what his anointing is? Anybody knows what's anointing? Angie, what's anointing? We pray, right? Pastor the Lord, anoint us. What is anointing? Anointing is a person of the Holy Spirit. Okay, let me tell you this. The anointing of the Lord is a person of the Holy Spirit. And the term anointing is found in the Old Testament when the priest will, will take the olive oil, will take the oil and anoint the vessel in the, in the, uh, you know, in the, in the tabernacle. So whatever is anointed means it's consecrated unto the Lord. So in the New Testament, when we talk about the anointing, just touch on anointing a little bit. When, when we say God's anointing you, that means Holy Spirit begin to touch you, begin to anoint you for something that you are called to do. Amen. So all of us are called to do something. We are all called to fulfill our purpose. You cannot fulfill your purpose and God's destiny without the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That's why Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. So when the Spirit of the Lord appoints me, means the anointing of the Holy Spirit comes on you. Alright? And another picture, you can see Matthew 3, 16 and 17, when Jesus was baptized, He got up, a dove came and rested on Him. That's a sign of anointing. The anointing of the Lord is the power of God on you. Where do you find this? Second, uh, second, uh, first John chapter 2, verse 10. The anointing of the Lord is the power of God. When we say the anointing of the Lord is upon us, that means the power of God comes on you. So when Saul was anointed as a king, what happens, Matan? Good to see you. You look the same, huh? And some of you said, I lost weight. I feel so good. <laughs> Thank you. I lost weight. Huh? Well, how many of you think I lost weight? Oh, praise the Lord. For all the burger and bacon I ate. Oh, maybe I should change my diet, huh? <laughs> we came back, came back home, whack, not, you know, I whacked Nasalama, you know. Same night, got heartburn, you know, all that. Oh, thank the Lord, I lost weight. Anyways, when the Lord anointed Saul, what happens is Saul was being chosen as a king. But when the Lord, you know, the, the, and, and, and how he was chosen as a king, the Lord, say, the, the scripture says, for time's sake, we're not going to go there. Um, um, prophet Samuel came and he said, Saul, God has found you as a king of Israel. All right, so you see time and season, the, the people of Israel didn't have a king. They looked at other nations and said, God, they all have a king. We don't have a king. And God comes and tells, Israel, I am your king. What are you talking about? I am your king. And then the Lord says, 
because you ask, I'm going to give you a king. And God found Saul. So the pro- Saul, Samuel comes and says, the Lord says to Samuel was just doing his own, sorry, Saul was doing his own stuff. God calls Samuel, uh, Saul out and Samuel began to anoint him with the oil. The moment the anointing came, the scripture says, Saul began to prophesy. Another word says, Saul, as Saul prophesied, his life changed. He became a different man. So when, when we say when the anointing of the Lord comes on you, I want you to know that when the Lord touches you, the Holy Spirit touches you, you become a different man, different woman. You become suddenly your emotions are different. Suddenly the way you think are different. Suddenly the way you desire for things changes. If you are not desiring to read the word, to, to pray or serve the Lord, most probably you need a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Don't be angry with me. Come on. The Lord's going to anoint you tonight. Amen. So the Lord anoints you. Look at, you look at David. The, David says, Psalms 92 verse 10. The Lord has anointed me with a fresh oil. We are about 79 days before we enter 2020. And I believe we need a fresh anointing from the Lord. Ten people said, Amen. Hallelujah. We need a fresh, what is the fresh anointing of the Lord? We need, you see, God, at, God always does new thing in our life. How do I know that? Look at this book of Psalms. If you look at the book of Psalms for time, reason, Psalms is full of this word. He says, you know, sing a new song to the Lord. Psalms, you know, David writes, sing a new song to the Lord. I mean, you like old songs. I like old songs. However, the scripture says, sing a new song to the Lord. Why? New song means a new anointing. New anointing means a new season. Amen. Saul was not a king. He was just an ordinary man. But when the anointing of the Holy Spirit comes on someone, that person destiny changes. It doesn't matter how old you have been a Christian. It doesn't matter how long. When the fresh comes, you become brand new. Amen. You become a brand new person. You become a brand new person. Saul was so about himself, but the Lord chose him and said, Saul, I am choosing you to be a king. His life changed. And then fast forward, you see the life of David. David had three appointment of the Lord. Three, three places where God anointed him. And David was just about himself. You know this story. You know the Lord says so I have rejected Saul. I have rejected Saul. Why? Because he had anointing but he didn't have, he wasn't obeying the Lord. The Lord said, told Saul Saul go for a war but certain things you don't take back. Certain things of the enemy you don't take back. But because Saul was Listening to his people, his soldiers, he said, they say they brought back certain things. And the Lord says, What is that noise of that cattle that in my ears? God asking Saul, What is that that the noise of the sheep? And Saul goes, God, uh, that is the, the, the remaining of the war. God says, I told you not to take it. And Saul goes, It's not me, Lord. I took it for the people. And the Lord goes, like Saul, today I'm taking the kingdom away from you. All right, Saul did his own stuff. Saul was feared man rather than fear God. So what happened? God says, I'm taking the kingdom away. And then the Lord gives a word and says, I have found a shepherd boy that would become a king and he will be man after my own heart. And then Samuel goes and finds David. Right, you know this story. He goes to the house. All his brother standing there thinking they're going to be chosen. The anointing of the Lord always fall on the one that thinks that won't fall. Why? All his brother was standing on, standing, all the brother was standing, thinking, you know, they're going to be, the, the anointing going to, you know, he's going to be get chosen. But the Lord said, there's another one that is in there, in the farm. There's another one in there. Feel the tending sheep. What do you mean tending sheep? He's doing things that the brother's not doing. And I believe this is a prophetic word for our church, prophetic word for our city. If I would say this, that God had chosen earth where people think that God, nobody would choose our church, our city, our nation, but the Lord has called earth. Amen. Amen. 
So Samuel says, no, 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 not, none of these good looking men, none of these guys. But there is a one that is on the field that we've been having conversation with God. There's the one that's been playing harp that have touched the heart of God. There's the one that no one sees, but he sees God. There's the one that doesn't fear man, but fear God. That's why when Goliath came against Israel, you know what David said? How can you talk? How can you defame, defy my the glorious name of the Lord? Why? He learned to have conversation with the Lord in the feel. So God looks at David and says, that's the one I've chosen. And God says, bring that man. Some scholar says, David was mistress wife, uh, mistress son. How do we know that? When my mother and father, in sin I've been conceived. Psalms 51. He said, in sin I've been conceived. Some say he was a man. Uh, his, David's mom is not a legitimate, son, legitimate mom. A wife, you know, of, the, of, of his father Jesse. So God looks at David and says, this is what I've chosen. And God calls David. David walks in. And the anointing of the Lord comes on him. Scripture says, when the anointing came on him, it remained on David. And, he never, and, and you look at different places, God will bring David. And God will anoint him as a king for the assignment, for the purpose, the internal purpose of God will fulfill when, when, when David were anointed with the Holy Spirit. What's the internal purpose of God? Through, this, through the lineage, lineage of David came our Lord Christ Jesus. That's why the blind man, I think it was a blind man who said, Son of David, he didn't even call Jesus. He called son of David, have mercy on me. But he was a shepherd boy that carried the, the, the very legacy that was really later translated you know, from, to Jesus. Amen. So you and I, when God anoints us, I want you to know, He doesn't anoint us just to sing on this stage. He's anointing us for a purpose that will speak in eternity. Amen. You, when God anoints us like David, that means he has something on his mind concerning you, your husband, your wife, your family, your generation, your city, that it will blow your mind away. Amen. Who would have thought I would preach? At the age of 10 or 11, I can't even speak, I couldn't even speak English. You asked Angie, she was my chemistry teacher. I still owe her money, I think. No? <laughs> Angie was like, Johnny, you can never study properly, right? No, she didn't say that. <laughs> she was my tuition teacher, chemistry. I, only three classes I went, the fourth one I said, forget about chemistry. Who would have thought I would preach because I could have never really speak when I was young? My first experience of English is when I was 15 years old. 15 or 12, I think it's 12. But because the Lord anointed me, because the anointing comes on you, God will begin to do things in your life, through you, in you, the things that you can imagine. Amen. This city needs people that walk in an awareness that they are anointed by the Lord. Amen. We all are anointed for something. Either you're anointed for, for worship, we are anointed to be a mom, anointed to be a dad. Do you know you can be anointed to be a businessman? Solomon was a great businessman. Paul was a good businessman. Do you know you can be anointed? Tonight, I pray that the Lord will anoint you for one reason. That is a purpose that God has called. Above all other purpose, guys, that you are called to do, you are called. We are called, Calvary Community Church are called to be a high priest of the Lord. To be a high priest of the Lord. Where do I find this? Let's turn to Revelation. Hang in there, guys. We're going to just get into this. Revelation chapter 2. Before I get into this, I really want to minister to the Lord through a song. So I'm going to ask Pastor Derek and Pastor Crystal to minister to us. Why don't you guys come front here? It's like a special song, you know. Thank you, God. Are you guys awake? 
Amen. If you're sleeping, say amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thanks for the spirit. Amen. Um, so I want you to look at Revelation chapter 1. Did you guys bring your Bible to church? How many of you brought your Bible? The rest of you from, from where? <laughs> Next week, bring your Bible. We read together, okay? <laughs> no, okay. It's okay. Uh, uh, Revelation chapter 1, verse 6. He said, um, And he has made us to be, made us. What is the anointing? The first, the first foremost anointing in your life. There's so much, so much I can talk about anointing. But one of the f- most, most profound or the assignment of God in our life is not to win soul first, but to become a priest unto the Lord. Okay? In the Old Testament, listen, in the Old Testament, there's only one person can minister to the Lord. Only one person can go near God. But because of the precious blood of the Lord, all of us are called to minister to the Lord. Amen? So look at this. So He has called us to be, be a kingdom, priest, to His is God, this God means Jesus, the Father, to Him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever and Amen. Come on, let's read together. Can we do that? So I tell you, there is holiness in the reading the word. How many of you know, you just read the word, you get sanctified. Do you know that? You just read the word, you know, some breakthrough happens. If you don't believe next seven days, just read the word, whether you understand or not, your atmosphere in your house will change. Read that. Let's do one, two, three. And... He has made us to be a kingdom priest to his God and Father. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Okay, sounds like a bit like Pasa Malam, okay? <laughs> let's do this together. Let's, let's read it together as if heaven is reading together with us. Can we do that? In the count of three. One, two, three. Let's go. And yes. He has made, made us to be a kingdom priest to his God and Father. To Him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So you and I carry a ministry. Number one, your first and foremost ministry is to minister unto the Lord. Okay, the anointing that comes, the, 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 the grace that comes on you to minister unto the Lord. What is ministry unto the Lord? In the, in the, in the book of, you know, you look at throughout the scripture when God talked about tabernacle. God will tell, God gave a commandment for time reason, right? I'm not looking at the scripture, okay? Just here, all in the scripture. God will tell people of Israel, uh, people, God will tell, gave a commandment and say, don't let the fire, don't let the lamb in the most holiest place to, to, to burn out. So the work of a priest is to make sure that that, 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 that lamb to burn. All right, the work of a, mini, of, of, of a priest that you will go into the most holiest place and make sure the lamb is burning. All right, so for us in the New Testament, how does it translate? Okay, we are the temple of God. How does it translate? That fire is worship unto the Lord. God wants our worship. All right, the spirit of man is a, it's like a light. You know, you have a light of the Holy Spirit. You are light, you are burning light. You are burning, you know, with the light of Jesus. When the Holy Spirit comes on you, you are burning. So in the presence of God, God wants his high priest to keep the oil burning. You need the oil of the Holy Spirit to keep the fire of God burning in his presence. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. So our, your job and my job, first more, auntie, our ministry is to minister unto the Lord in worship. Amen. It is not so much when you come to the Lord and ask Him for things. It is what you give to Him. That is ministry unto the Lord. Listen to this carefully. Ministry unto the Lord is not what you're asking, what you get from God, but what you can give to God. So when you come on Saturday service, do you know when you come Saturday service, you are giving, it's not just money, but you're giving is worship first. Does it make sense? You're giving the Lord your worship. What? You're ministering unto the Lord first. And then you get the word of God where God ministered to you. That's how it works. So God in this time, in this hour, God is looking for people that would minister to Him without just expecting anything from Him. God will do it for you, but God is looking for people to minister to Him. Why is it important? Because... 
You see in the scripture, in the book of Samuel, when there was no revival, you know, in the book of Samuel, the scripture says, Eli and he both, his, he both Eli the prophet, his sons begin to sin and the, the, Lord, the Lord begin to withdraw his face. There's no, there's no revival, the presence of God left. But Samuel was ministering to the Lord. Samuel was worshipping in his temple. A young boy worshipping to the Lord. What happens? When he was ministering to the Lord, the scripture says, the word of the Lord came to Samuel. If you want awakening in your family, if you want your family to get saved, if you want the blessing of the Lord, if you want God to use you powerfully, if you want something to happen in your life, you need the word of the Lord, which is first comes when you minister to the Lord. Amen. We do not live by side by by faith. The word of God says uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing the word of the Lord. So for you to live a life that's burning for the Lord, for God to begin to use you, when your life that is touches life, when your life that is being, being impacting nations and all around, you know, we need to burn. If you want that, we need the word of the Lord and it comes by ministering to the Lord. Amen. So we are called as the high priest. As we're going to sing this song, I want every one of us to minister to the Lord. There's going to be a fresh anointing. They're going to breathe. I want you to close your eyes and lift your hands to the Lord. And what, does, what happens when the anointing comes? Adrian, you will start thinking differently. You begin to see Jesus in the scripture. When the anointing comes, the Holy Spirit reveals Jesus. How many of you are sitting here tired? How many of you are sitting here with you say, Philip, Pastor, I've lost my first love. How many of you are sitting that you feel like, man, I'm doing the same thing again and again and again. You are the candidate for God's anointing tonight. How many of you are sitting here, you feel like you, we need something new in our city. We need a new song in our city. We need something to move. We need something to ch shave and change. T tonight, let the Lord anoint you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Give me that string, Ivy. Thank you, Lord. Precious Lord. Every eye is closed. Lift your hand to the Lord. There's a glory here tonight. Thank you. In a moment, I feel the Holy Spirit is going to touch us in a powerful way. Before the lesson minister, come on, guys. Everywhere, everybody, all over this place. Come on, begin to pray in the Spirit. All over this place, come on. When you begin to pray in the Spirit, something happens. I see chains breaking tonight. I see there's healing happening. There's somebody here with pain on your back is being healed right now, right now, right now, right now. Come on. Hopelessness being broken for a time. And seasons such as this, come on. Roko patala shete. Rekaba soto. Rekama shandai. There's something that's holding your family. God is breaking that tonight. Tonight is a night of breakthrough. Come on. Let the Lord anoint you. Tell, tell the Lord, Lord, anoint me. Anoint me as a high priest. Let me be a vessel of honor in the house of God. Come on. You are called to serve the Lord. You are called to win souls. You are called to reach out. You are called to minister to the Lord. You are a high priest. You are chosen by the Lord for a time. As Caesar such as this, let the Lord anoint you. Come on. I see souls coming to the kingdom of God. I see souls coming to the kingdom of God. Or just forget about everything and just worship the Lord. Holy, holy, holy are you. If you feel like standing, you stand. If you feel like sitting down, you sit down. But let's just worship the Lord. Come on. Come on, let His presence fill this place. Holy. Forget about the person next to you. Get lost in His presence. Come on. Yeah. Others and angels bow, the redeemed worship you now. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. And holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Come on, yes. 
holy, 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 are you, Lord. The others, the others and angel. Come on, everyone, sing it out. Yeah. We worship you now. Holy, 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 are you, and angels all over this place let's forget ourselves and worship him he's worthy Holy, 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 holy are you, Lord. Come on, if you feel tired, let the Lord just renew you. Holy, holy, holy are you. Oh, I feel the anointing of the Lord tonight. Don't know, that's a special anointing on you. Come on, keep singing, guys. Angels, the redeemed worship you now. Holy, holy. Don't know the Lord is touching you. Holy, 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 you Lord. Holy, 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 you Lord. Come on, a fresh touch from the Holy Spirit. Holy, Jesus. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. The others and angels bow. They redeem, worship you now. Holy, holy, holy. Blessed be 
Blessed be the Lord God Almighty. Come on, as you sing, His presence will be to touch you. Blessed be the Lord. Come on, tell the Lord. Touch me tonight, Lord. With a fresh anointing, God. Who reigns forevermore. Blessed be the Lord. God Almighty. Such a presence of the Lord. I didn't plan to do this, but I feel the Lord is moving you powerfully. I see a couple of you I have an encounter with the Lord. I sense the Lord is saying, I'm, I'm taking you into a new season. Not just because God wants to use you, but you feel in your heart, you have, you, God is just going to, is just renewing His passion, your passion for Him right now. And only Holy Spirit can do that. Just get connected. Just next few minutes. Tell the Lord, Lord, I surrender my heart to you again. If you're here, you feel far away from the Lord and you don't actually walk with the Lord. You know in your heart you're struggling with sin. Tonight, tell the Lord, come into my heart. Jesus, you are the Savior, Lord. Anoint me fresh. If you have offenses in your heart that you cannot worship God, Tell the Lord, Lord, I begin to forgive those people and I want to worship you, Lord. Oh. Father in heaven, how we love you. Come on, let's love the Lord. We lift your name in all the earth. Let your kingdom be established in our praises.
Seni, Seni to come. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty, who reigns forevermore. Blessed be, blessed be the Lord God. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty, who reigns, who reigns forevermore. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty, who was any sadness to Blessed be the Lord God Almighty, single reigns, who reigns forevermore, reigns, who reigns forevermore. Come on. Who Thank you for your presence. For the next 10 minutes, I just pray you, your word begin to burn in the hearts of your people. That your heart, the, your, the, your word will cause such a revival. And that we will go back from this place renewed, restored, rebuilt towards your heart. We give you praise and honor and God's, all God's people say, Amen. Please be seated. Welcome to our evening service. Just kidding. <laughs> I want you to minister to you next 10 minutes. I promise you I won't take too long. From 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Now, the purpose of this word, how many of you feel you just got splashed by the Holy Spirit? <laughs> how many of you feel renewed? Come on, can I see your hand? Amen. This is just a beginning. Tonight, the Lord's going to, I feel like I'm supposed to lay hands on some of you um, to pray for you. You know, um, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, keep it. Keep it strings and um, yeah, Second Corinthians chapter two, verse fourteen. I want to minister to you the the victory of Jesus. All right, everybody say the victory of Jesus. All right, verse fourteen says, "But thanks to be God, who leads us in in what in triumph." Another translation say, "Who leads us in victory in Christ?" If Jesus have you know not if. The Lord's plan for our life is to lead us in victory. Amen. God's plan for us not to be defeated. If you are living a defeated lifestyle, if we are living a different lifestyle, we just need the Lord to touch us. We need some kind of truth because the place that Jesus lived from is a place of victory. Amen. Very soon, listen to this prophetically. Don't know, the Lord is really touching you. Right? You can feel it, right? I really sense the Lord's going to give you a new song in this season. You've been, you're coming out of your wilderness, Donna. Very soon, this, this, our city will experience the, the favor that we have never experienced before. Because one of the most important person in this city is going to rule our nation. Okay? So, this city, our city is going to have favor. I tell you, church, get ready. We're going to see people are going to get saved left, right, center. We're going to next year, we're going to do a lot, of, a lot of things that will mobilize people to get saved. So we're going to have a city. But here's my point. Jesus lived in the place of victory. Jesus, although the, Lord, the Lord defeated death and become victorious, became victorious. The one of the most, the scripture says that the, the, the enemy that the Lord overcame was death. There's no war that you will see in the Bible that God, God was defeated, ever defeated. No. Do you know there's never in the Bible God was defeated? Amen. 
every time, every moment, for eternity, before you and I were born, before devil was created, he's already victorious. He's, he's the champion of all champion. And what Paul is saying in the scripture is giving a glimpse for the body of Christ. He's saying, church, you have been purchased with the precious blood of the Lamb. You are not saved by Pastor Rajan's sermon. You're not saved by Calvary City Church, Community Church, next, I don't know what. How many of you know that? You're not saved by men, but you are saved by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. You are not saved by men. You are never, ever, men can never, ever save you. But it was Jesus that saved you. And that marvelous gospel of Jesus was done, was, was sealed by the precious blood of the Lamb. The blood of the Lamb. Amen. The power of the blood of the Lamb, the, the blood of Jesus is the place of our victory. Amen. The blood is so precious. These days, nowadays, we don't preach about the blood. We preach about how to be amazing. Not this church. Pastor Rajan does a good job, okay? Everything about man right now, right? About the sermon. Pastor, tell me what's good with me. Tell me how amazing I am. Alright? But let me tell you something. God is bringing back the power of His blood to His church. Because in the book of Acts, they overcame the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and the testimony of our mouth. The blood of the Lamb. The power of the blood of the Lamb. The blood of Jesus is our, our very inheritance of victory. So I want to talk about very shortly seven places the Lord shed His blood in the gospel. Is it okay? Is it okay? Seven places that the Lord shed His blood. We think it's in the cross. No. It was not on the cross alone. The seven places and these seven places, if you give attention to this revelation, I tell you, I tell you something, your heart will burn for Jesus. Your heart will burn for Jesus. I've been, I've been thinking about these seven places again and again. I tell you, I'm, once the war is over, I am going to Israel and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to visit all these seven places. Really, I'm going to take selfie and put it on my Instagram. I don't care what people say. You know, of course, we'll ask Pastor Rajan if I can go. <laughs> Next February, actually, I wanted to go. I was thinking, why do I go and just sit where the Lord said and just worship the Lord, you know? Amen. How many of you want to go to Israel? <laughs> By faith. Seven places. Number one, why is it important for you to know the power of the blood of Jesus? Because your victory, it's not on a sermon. Let me tell you, sermon doesn't give you victory, but it's the blood of the Lamb. Okay, coming to church doesn't give you anything. It gives you, you know, I'm, hear me out. Coming to church is so powerful, but I want to tell you your victory and your standing is in the blood of the Lamb. Seven places, number one. Luke 22, verse 44. It is the place, first place that Jesus shed His blood. It was not before the cross. It was in the Garden of Gethsemane when the Lord was praying. The scripture says he prayed, he prayed. It was such a, some of us think we are going through a hard time. Talk to Jesus about it. Some of you think you are overwhelmed by stuff. Jesus was crying until, Jesus was weeping until his sweat became blood. How much of a pain he went through, emotional pain. His emotion was so attacked by the enemy, he felt the grip of death until his sweat became blood. And that is a place of victory that Jesus started with. Why? In the place, what does it mean? He, you know, he was struggling with his willpower. It was like, Father, if it is possible, I don't want to go. I don't want to go to the cross. Father, if it is possible, remove this cup away from me. What? Jesus was battling with willpower. But thanks to be our God, as the scripture says, who gave us victory. Why? Because Jesus healed his, his, his will for us when He shed that blood. Now you and I, our will can be sanctified and we can do the will of God. Somebody say? Amen. Amen. If you're not doing the will of God, you just meditate on what He done for you on the cross. Amen. Just 
think about what he did on the cross. Number one, his sweat became blood so that you and I can inherit the will of God. It was in the garden that we lost our authority. In the garden, we became a clown for the, to the enemy. How many of you know that? In the garden, enemy made fun of us. But you back in the garden, God redeemed back and called us sons and daughters through the blood. Amen? Number two, his face. Isaiah, see, I gave my back to those who strike me. This is David prophetically writing about a precious Lord. Okay, I can talk about the David who tapped on the grace of the Lord. He saw Jesus before in the Old Testament, okay? So I gave my back to those who strike me and my cheeks to those who pluck out the beard. I did not cover my face from humiliation and spitting. I, I gave my cheek to be plugged out. You see in the gospel, they plucked the beard of Jesus on his face. Why? The plugging of the beard of Jesus speaks about honor. Jesus' blood shed. He lost his honor in that place so you and I can have honor in Christ Jesus. Amen. That's why when they look at Christians, they'll be like, well, something about you guys we don't know. Like you guys are just be special. Why? It is the anointing. It is the blood that's on you. Amen. So the blood, number, number two, is on his face. Number three, Matthew 27, 29, 30. Matthew, and after twisting together a crown of thorn, I just want you to take a moment and just remember this moment our precious Lord died for us. They took the thorn of, and squeezed on his head. You know, Angie, most of the time we don't talk, we don't think about the cross. We think about the cross during Good Friday or Easter. Why? Sometimes we think cross, after we became Christian after the cross, it doesn't matter anymore. I tell you, the way of living of a Christian is to carry the cross. It's to remember the cross. We're going to take communion in just a moment, but I want you to think about this. There was a crown, there was, there was crown of thorn that was on his head. So that you and I can have a right thinking mind of Christ. The blood of Jesus just split open. His head were, you know, his just thorn was so, you know, it was just so bad that, you know, it just talk about God redeemed our mind. When the Lord says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and mind, He didn't do it so that we can fight and figure out. No, every time God gives us a commandment, He'll always give us a provision. He will never leave us often to figure out how, how to get close to Him. So He said, you know, love the Lord with your mind. Why? At the, at, you know, Jesus, Jesus shed His blood. Number four, Matthew 27, 26. They punished His back. They broke open His back. Lashes, 40 means death. If they would have put one more strike at the back of Jesus, Jesus would have died. 39 stripes. It's all prophetic. I tell you, it's all prophetic. 39 stripes. 40 is wilderness. 40 is death. If they strike one more, die. Jesus would have died. But 39 strikes at the back. Jesus took. Jesus' blood. Was, Jesus shed his blood on, in that place because the back talks about your burden. The back talks about by the stripes of Jesus we are healed. Healing is your portion. Healing is yours because the blood was shed. Amen. Come on, somebody say, healing is, mine. healing is mine. Health, perfect health. What is back for? Your bone is your spinal cord. I pray the Lord's going to heal somebody with a back pain this morning, tonight. As I'm preaching, the Lord is healing your back pain. He, the back was broke open. 39 lashes. 39. The guy who did, who did a Passion of Christ, a friend of mine was talking to him. He said, in that moment, the lashes actually... It was through lashes, like they, they you know, they used the, the real one. Uh, you know, that's a way they want to, they want to actually capture it that, that he doesn't touch the skin. But somehow, at one point, he touched the skin. He said he was just, he, he couldn't do the production for, for months. He was so, he was, you know, he was so bad. 39 lashes, Charlotte, pierced our precious Lord. The scripture says he was without form on the cross. Some of us see a good, I preach in America on this message. Some of you see a beautiful cross. The cross were never beautiful. It was the judgment of God. 
He was ugly. Jesus was but naked on the cross. And this is this is the savior that we need to we want to minister to. This is the king that our heart burns for. Amen. Amen. His feet, you know, his back number number five, the fifth place that Jesus, Jesus shed his blessed. Psalms 22 verse 16. Come on, guys. Psalm 22 verse 16 says, For dogs have surrounded me, a band of evildoers have you know, and compassed me, they pierced my hand and my feet. You know the scripture. You know where Jesus was and the, and the mountain of, you know, Golgotha, you know, Jesus was hanging and his, his hand, his hand shed the blood for us. Hand talks about dominion. Hands talk about authority. Jesus' blood gives you and you and I authority over demons, authority over sickness, Authority, everything that's on earth, your when your hand touches, the power of God comes. Amen. Because of the blood, because his blood was number six. His feet. Come on, get in, guys. We're gonna do communion real quick. Come on, Derek, Pastor Derek. His feet. Psalms twenty. Same words. Jesus' feet were nailed, and blood was coming out of his feet because. Through that, every places that you will touch, every places that we will go is called, you know, it's, it's blessed. Why? The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. You, every places you go, you walk in the victory of God. Somebody say, Amen. Every places, I want you to go back with this revelation. Adrian, every places your foot will step, every places you go, every mama shop you step into, when you walk into your office, know that you are a blessed man because of the blood that was shed for us. Amen. Because of the blood. Amen. The power of the blood of Jesus. Number seven, John 19, 34. John 19, 34. One of the soldiers... Whew, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear. And immediately, blood and water came out. When they pierced the side of Jesus, it touched his heart. The pierce is very sharp. Three things that David fought for while, while he was dying. Side note, okay, just coming out of the topic a little bit. Goliath was carrying sword, spears, and javelin. All this has meaning to it. Sword is authority. Did the enemy come with authority? But the word of the Lord covers you. Spears, when you, somebody carries a spears, it is the most painful weapon in the near proximities. Okay, when somebody pierces you, remember Jonathan and his father, Saul, not my father, huh? in the Bible, <laughs> Saul, were, they both were pierced together. So the, pierce, the spears went through his Saul and Jonathan. Why? It is the most sharpest thing they use. And the scripture says, Jesus, side of his, of his side, he was, you know, he was pierced into. And I believe that pierce will touch his heart. Why? So you and I, can touch the heart of God. You and I can just worship the Lord and God can just touch us with His heart. He, the heart of Jesus was pierced so that you and I can have a pure heart. You and I can walk with clear conscience. You and I can walk with a demon inside of us. You and I can walk with the love and the power of the Holy Spirit. There's a seven places the precious Lord shed His blood for us. Tonight, we don't have much time, but tonight, this revelation, when you have this seven revelation, when you begin to ask the Lord to anoint you, God will begin to do something in your heart that your reading of the Word, when you go out from this place, you will go burning f- with the name of Jesus in your heart. I want you to stand to your feet, prepare your communion as we're going to take communion together. Thank you, Lord. 
I want you to remember the blood as we sing a chorus. in your heart. Just sing it out. Oh, the blood. Let the Lord hear your voice. Seven places, Lord. He washes my nets. No, one more time. Just the voices. such an anointing of the Lord tonight to remember the blood of Jesus the anointing of the Lord comes when we remember the blood I want you to just take a moment just close your eyes don't look around just close your eyes don't be distracted just think of the blood that touches your head Touches your face. It cleanses you, make you pure. Touches your back. Touches your hand. Touches your feet. That touches your side represent the anointing of the Lord. Come on, let Him cleanse you tonight. If you are here feeling far away from the Lord, this is the right time. If you are struggling with sin, forsake that sin and come to the Lord. That's the sin is not worthy. His blood is worthy. He's more valuable than the sin. Let the Lord set you free tonight as you just meditate on the blood. And Jesus took the bread and He said, This is my body, which is broken for you and I. And I want you to take a moment right now, just in reverence of the cross of Jesus. Thank you, God. 
Let's partake the bread together. Thank you, Lord. Bless this cup, Lord. Bless this bread, Lord. And the blood of Jesus, as we talked about, is our victory. Thank you for the blood that was shed. Lord, as your people take this as a sign of respect and honor to your blood, Father, I pray there be miracle breakthrough from this place. Not only that, God, I pray, let us let our heart turn towards you to love you, Lord, more than anything else. Thank you for the blood, Lord. Let's partake this cup together, the body of Christ. As you put your cups down, just give me one more minute. Slip your hands to the Lord. Just the strings, no voices. Slip your hands. I just feel the Lord wants to touch you in a special way. No voices. Don't sing it. Thank you, Lord. Just the string. Thank you, Lord. Let the Lord just touch you in your special way right now, wherever you are. I sense there's a fresh touch of the Lord Father get ready guys get ready there's, there's a power of God going to come up okay some of you might feel like sitting on your chair falling down whatever it is some of you are going to feel the healing of the Lord some of you are going to be delivered right now your mind is going to be clear after this so I'm going to in the name of Jesus of Nazareth I'm going to release the power of God get ready to receive it alright Father, in Jesus' mighty name, I release the fire of the Holy Ghost. Right now, receive it. Come on, receive. Don't, don't hesitate. Don't let your mind go away. By faith, see the fire of God just touching you. In Jesus' mighty name, I take authority. Every fear, every sickness, every disease that never be found in the body of Christ to leave your body right body of Christ right now in Jesus name come on receive it receive it every marriages I speak healing over you take it take it take it reach out to the Lord come on reach out to the Lord humble yourself before the Lord humble yourself before the Lord reach out to the Lord come on 
Give honor to the anointing that's right now in the room. Guys, don't, don't, just don't think too much. Give honor to the anointing. Where you honor, you will receive the reward. Where you honor, you will receive the reward. Come on, don't think too much. Don't worry about it. Next few minutes. Receive, receive, receive. The Lord is about to move in your family. Come on, if your sons and daughters are not walking with the Lord. Sister, if your daughter is not walking with the Lord. Come in front, the Lord's going to touch you and the Lord's going to anoint you so that your children can be saved. Come on. If you are that person, come run in front. The Lord's going to touch you. I sense the Lord is delivering some of you from fear of future. Fear of future. There's something about fear of, you know, you cannot sleep in the night or there's a fear that's holding you. If you are that person, come in front under the anointing, the Lord's going to set you free. Come on. If you know how to pray in the spirit, come on, begin to pray in the spirit. Come on, honor the anointing, you will receive the reward. Honor the anointing, you will receive the reward. Come on, some of you, you cannot sleep well in the night. The Lord's going to deliver you. If you're that person, come from. I sense there is somebody in your family not walking with the Lord. Come in front. The Lord's going to touch your family. I tell you, I'm speaking this under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Don't lose the moment. Don't lose the moment. If your family member are not saved, come in front. There's an impartation of the salvation of the Lord. Come on, for a time, and see the such as it. Don't lose the moment, guys. Come on. And you know, if you're standing there, Pastor, I need a touch from the Lord. I want you to get up from your seat and come right in front because the Lord is touching right now. Come, 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 come. Adrian, come help me, Adrian. Come on. There's anointing of the Lord in the house. There's anointing of the Lord in the house. The house of the Lord is in the it's being anointed tonight. I don't know what it is. Erekeba soto, era kama, ereketa lala soto, erekera masanda. If you have a pulling in your heart that you have to come in front, leave your seat and come in front because the Lord is about to anoint you. Erekaba satarara shanda, erekapa pabare. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there's breakthrough. There's breakthrough anointing tonight. There's breakthrough anointing tonight. If you're in bondage, if your business is not working, something is hindering your life. If you are not able to conceive, come in front tonight. It's a night of miracle. The Lord is about to burst out a miracle in your life. Come on. Oh. Come on, praise the Lord, oh my soul, all that is within me, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, who is victorious, praise the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within me, praise His holy name. And I really sense if you are sitting here, if you are here tonight, church, actually the Lord loves you so much. He's just calling you out. If you are not even able to pray for an hour, there's no shame, there's no guilt. But if you are not able to pray for an hour to sit with the Lord or read the Bible, I want you to know the Lord wants to anoint you tonight. I want you to come in front as well. If you are that person, don't be shy. If you're not able to spend time with the Lord of prayer, you feel something is stuck here. You cannot give the Lord. Come right in front. The Lord's going to anoint you. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Hey. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, that is breakthrough. Jesus is here tonight. I tell you, He is here tonight. Yeah. 
on, worship the Lord. He rose and conquered the grave. Come on, yes. Jesus conquered the Savior. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation. Father, I thank you for your anointing tonight. Come on. Can we just thank the Lord for His presence? Come on. Lord, we thank you for your anointing tonight. We want to honor you in the house. We want to honor you that you are here. Lord, as people in front, we're going to pray. Those who are at the back, as they are going back, Lord, I pray. Lift your hands to the Lord. I pray for your blessing to be upon your people. They will go back with burning in their hearts with the love for Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you are giving them ministry of a high priest and the blood of Jesus will cause them to be victorious. They will cloak, they will go back with clear mind, not confused. They will go with clear mind and Lord, they will spend time with you and your glory will come. Bless them, Lord. The Lord's going to bless your finance too. I really believe that this weekend. Bless those who are going back, God. In Jesus' name we pray.